Welcome to my installment of South of the Sahara, the collective work of YouTubers from all over, well, YouTube. It is the brainchild of Jabari of the channel called From Nothing, which focuses on African history. South of the Sahara is our attempt to bring the wealth of history and culture of Sub-Saharan Africa to the forefront. At the end of my video, there will be a card that leads to the entire South of the Sahara playlist. Once you're done watching mine, please check out the amazing videos that my fellow YouTubers have made. Since stories and storytelling are the focus of my channel, I decided to recount a story from the Sena people. The story of Makoma, the great boy warrior. The Sena are an ethnic group with origins in what is now Northwest Mozambique, mainly in the Zambezi River Valley. They speak a language called Kisena and are well known for their art and craft, such as stools, mats, and masks. Reverence for their ancestors is important to their traditional faith, as is seen in this story. The Sena people actually get their name from a town called Sena, so named by the Portuguese Vicente Pegado in the 1500s. And so with that introduction, now to begin my retelling of the story of Makoma. Most parents know to expect their young children to cry when they want something. However, in the town of Sena, on the banks of the Zambezi River, there was a young boy who did not need to cry. You see, he could speak clearly, even in his young age. He was tall and strong, and wielded an iron hammer called Nuendo. The boy's mother knew he was special. How could she not? My child, she said one day, what name will you go by? In response, he told her to call the leaders of their town together. He left Nuendo at home and led them all to a deep pool of the river where fierce crocodiles waited. As everyone watched, the nameless boy asked, Great men, who among you will dive into the pool and defeat these crocodiles? The men exchanged looks of shock. Of course, none of them stepped forward. Without so much as a moment's hesitation, the boy turned and dove into the river. Everyone was sure that something was seriously wrong with him. How could he throw his life away? His mother wailed in sorrow. Even one as strong as he was could never survive a fight with crocodiles, especially without his hammer. Suddenly, the ground shook and the raging pool became blood red. A head emerged, but it was not that of a crocodile, or even the boy. It was the head of a man. The man swam to shore and stood before the people. They knew who it was. No longer a boy, the nameless one had grown. He was tall and handsome. The leaders cheered at his accomplishment and his survival. Now, my people, he called out, you know my name. I am Makoma, because I have gone where no other would and killed the crocodiles. And what a fitting name it was, because Makoma means greater. To his mother, Makoma said, thank you for all you have done for me. I go now to find a new home and to become a hero. With his trusty hammer, Makoma left his hometown and crossed the Zambezi River. 
he traveled northwest many days and nights. One by one, he battled terrible giants. Kieswa Mapari, who makes the mountains. Kidibulataka, who makes the riverbeds. Kigwisamiti, who plants the forests. And Kigideyamoto, the fiery destroyer. With mighty swings of Nuendo, Makoma defeated them all and they willingly joined him as his servants and friends. After all, there was no denying that he truly was greater than they. Eventually, Makoma arrived at a meadow. To his new friends he said, I have traveled far and I am tired. This is a good place for a hero to build his home. Let us gather timber. But Makoma's fighting days weren't over yet. Another giant, Chindebu Maugiri, whose mustache was so thick that each strand was like a rope, tormented the hero's friends. But Makoma would not stand for this. He fought the great giant, besting even him. Chindebu Maugiri fell dead at Makoma's feet. The four giants rejoiced and feasted until late into the night. They fell asleep, assured that the new home they shared with their master and hero would finally be peaceful. Makoma's night wasn't as restful, however. A whisper tickled his ear. Makoma! As he watched, White moonlit forms appeared around him, the spirits of his forefathers. You have proven that you are indeed greater, but you have one final test, your greatest yet. Your friends may rest, but you may not until you have fought the five-headed Sakaterina. When the giants rose with the morning, they found Makoma already warming his hands by the fire. His sadness at leaving his home and his friends became theirs, but he comforted them and gave them parting gifts. They watched their hero leave, headed towards the west. For days and months, Makoma crossed deep rivers, climbed high mountains, and traversed parched deserts. The journey would have killed any other man, but not he who was greater. Eventually, he arrived at a small home at the base of two mountains. There were two beautiful women inside. Greetings, he said. I seek Sakaterina, who has five heads, are these his lands? Greetings, great warrior, the woman answered. We are Sakaterina's wives. There stands the one you seek. Makoma's eyes followed their gestures towards the two mountains. Those are his legs, they told him. The rest of him is hidden in the clouds. Amazed at how gigantic Sakaterina was, he nevertheless strode towards his great rival. With a great swing of his hammer nuendo, nothing happened. Undaunted, he tried again and again. A yawn reached down from the sky. <sighs> Who is scratching my feet? Sakaterina asked. I am Makoma he called, but there came no reply, not even a snore. Makoma headed off to collect all the dry brush and timber he could find. He set it around the giant's feet and lit it afire. A boom like thunder reached Makoma's ears from the clouds. 
who is making fire smolder my feet? I am, the hero answered. Makoma, I have traveled far to seek you, Sakaterina. My forefathers commanded me to do battle with you, so I do not grow fat and bored with no one to test my greatness. After a moment of silence, the great giant answered softly, I am glad you have come, Makoma. I too have become bored. No man has come close to my greatness. Prepare yourself for the fight of your life. Sakaterina plunged his hands through the clouds, grasped Makoma, and tossed him to the ground with enough force to shatter bone. Exhilarated, Makoma sprang to his feet, stronger and taller than ever before, and rushed at the great giant. The battle raged on, mountains rolling like pebbles at their feet. Makoma struck with no window, and Sakaterina tossed mountains as they wrestled. They fought without ceasing all day and into the next. Then, as night fell, both warriors collapsed, completely spent. When the sun woke them in the morning, Mulimo, the great spirit, was standing over them, a smile on his ancient face. Makoma and Sakaterina, he said, you are heroes so great that no man has been able to defeat you, not even each other. Come, behold your home with me in the clouds. Even as he said this, both heroes became invisible to the eyes of the people of Earth. Makoma had indeed fulfilled his promise to his mother. He had a new home, befitting such a great hero. And that's the story. Makoma fits into the character trope called the Enfant Terrible, which exists in many cultures in West and Central Africa. The Enfant Terrible is a supernatural child who is often destructive and feared, but in this case is revered. The child grows quickly and possesses power that no ordinary human has. Without knowing much about the culture and history of the Senna, it is hard to say what purpose the story of Makoma serves for them. However, if I were to guess, I would say that this is an inspirational story. A reminder that Makoma is still looking down and able to grant today's heroes knowledge and skill to succeed in everyday activities. But that's my interpretation. What's yours? Be sure to check out the rest of the South of the Sahara playlist. Thank you so much for supporting me and my fellow creators. I've been Ken Kwame and I'll see you next time.